It's a TGI Friday! Woo! Really hope you enjoyed that episode of In the Living Room with Park Chu Kang and Jojo Joget. That's their last show. And this also happens to be the last Friday we're going to be doing this. So we've got lots on the show for you. Um... Just a reminder though, echoing what uh, Pua Chu Kang as well as Jojo Joget says, although Circuit Breaker is technically coming to an end on Monday, but hey, we still got to do our part. It's a slow process of slow measures, slowly being uh, restrictions being released. So keep on doing what you're doing. We're all doing this like super long marathon. We're all marathon runners. So don't be the weak marathon link, okay? <laughs> okay, so looking forward this weekend, lots of things you can do. First of all, Take that. Remember that huge 90s band? Take that is doing a reunion. It's not going to be a tour. It's a one-off concert. Um, that's a very old picture of them. I hope it brought back some memories. So Jason Orange is not going to be part of the show. If you're wondering which one he is, Jason Orange is the second from right one, okay? So everybody else, including Robbie Williams, a one-off show from their homes. There you have a more recent picture without Jason Orange, who's not part of this. And this is going to be a wonderful way to sort of relive those good old 90s, right? Um, it's going to be the first of the Meerkat music gigs. It takes place tomorrow, our time, Saturday at 3 a.m., okay? And what you need to do is you need to go to Compare the Meerkat YouTube channel and Facebook Live. So if you're searching for YouTube, it's Compare, as in C-O-M-P-A-R-E, the Meerkat, it's one word, Facebook and YouTube, and it's a Take That Reunion, which is awesome. Now, here's another thing you could do if you love Shakespeare. You know, the Globe in the UK is Shakespeare's most famous venue, putting up Shakespeare's plays. And they're now streaming some of the plays live. Right now, you can catch... The Winter's Tale. There you have it. Now, this is going to be available all the way till this Sunday only. There is also Macbeth. So if you're a big, huge fan of um, uh, uh, Shakespeare, and this is like the UK version, and this is at Shakespeare's The Globe. Last but not least, if you want a bit of a ooh, 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 <laughs> there is a party happening now. Singapore Tourism Board and Zook, they've created this three-day festival that spans across the countries. Uh, it's called Future escapes okay so it kick starts you've got a local international djs and musicians you've got augmented reality filters and 3d virtual backgrounds three parties kicking off in the u.s which has diplo i'm not kidding you diplo is gonna go chicka, 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 chicka. there he is um and on the um, left that is christina novelli who will be spinning in the uk so it kicks off in the u.s with diplo our time on saturday from 11 a.m to 1 p.m and then on saturday evening it's for asia and you've got everyone's favorite mumbo jumbo sets as well it kicks off at 8 p.m on saturday and the last party is going to be in the uk you've got uh, christina novelli which you, which you, which you, spilling spinning spilling spinning and that's happening on our time in the wee hours of monday morning from 12 to 2 a.m. Okie dokie. Now it's time to get to our Jazzy's Poll of the Day. Okay, so after eight weeks of circuit breaker, we're getting into new routines and new habits, working from home. Which one do you prefer? Working from office or working from home? Facebook us and tell us your preference. Facebook.com slash class 95 FM. Also on our Instagram stories at class 95 FM. If you're part of our poll today, you could win a feast, a $80 halal feast that is courtesy of our um, Foodies Choice winner for Best Frog Porridge. There it is. It will be included in the feast. And don't worry, there is a halal feast for our Muslim winners as well. I'm going to go on air. Lunch break with Yasmin Chang. Hello, hello, hello. We've got a great show for you. We're live on Channel 5 right now. It's Yasmin with you. Coming up, some Spice Girls, Haley Steinfeld, a bit of John Mayer. Got some trivia about that as well. And some num num news. It's all about Italiano. But first, Ollie Murs. The best mix of music. This is Plus 95. Okay. Yes, we ran out a little bit of time there. So this feast, there'll be two winners if you are part of our poll. Okay, if you are part of our poll. If you are two winners, which we announced by the end of the show, that wonderful feast from our Foodies Choice for Best Frog Porridge, which is G7 Sinma Live Seafood. And for our Muslim winners, don't worry. We will have a halal feast delivered to you, also worth about $80, from their sister restaurant, which is the Dim Sum Bliss. Mm-mm. 
Sounds good, right? You want that makan feast. By the way, it gets delivered to your home this evening. Speaking of food, the muttons have this wonderful segment during, not during Circuit Breaker because they normally have guests coming in. It's called People in the Neighborhood, which always happens on a Friday. And every now and then, they go and learn from the people in the neighborhood. And this time, they learn how to make prata. Check it out. One, One two, 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 three, three. three. <laughs> so it's another edition of people in our neighborhood on site. Now, the last time you saw us flipping in the ring, but today we're gonna flip prata. So here we are, about to learn how to make prata. Mm-hmm. Now, this is really interesting for us because we love to eat prata. Yeah. And Maran's gonna teach us how. My name is Maran. I'm making prata for five years. My favorite prata, plain prata. Take the towel. Okay, this is the practice prata. Uh, okay. Tecla motion. It's like uh, pretend there's a bull, so you're trying to, you're like a bullfighter. Right? You practice want to eat? No, no. It's actually a strange feeling because your hands have to be drenched in oil. No, but touching the prata dough is actually like playing with plastic scene, which yeah. I love as a kid. So it's actually quite fun to, you know, mold the, the, the dough and then you, you know, you, you have to make it flat and after you have to flip it and everything. Yeah. So you know what I'm Yes. Uh, no bad. No bad. Hey, I know bad. Yay. Hey, Yours hey, yeah. broken, man. Yours is called prata hole. <laughs> I have a newfound respect for people who make prata. Absolutely. Because it's such a skill. I mean, it looks like... Ooh, ooh. Wow. I mean, just, just knowing the motion in itself mm. is like learning how to drive. Okay. Yeah. Then, uh, oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, oh, you okay, catch, okay, you Okay, so right now, after you know the training by Mr. Prata Skills himself, we're gonna actually make a real Prata and then he's gonna taste it and see which one better. Okay, so I remember the steps, okay? Oil, oil, and then we spread out the sides. I'm ready to flip. I'm getting good at this, yeah, man. man. You're not bad, huh? Look at, look at the size of my prata. Mine is gonna taste like a champion. So while waiting for our prata to be fried and cooked to do the taste test and everything, they surprised us by letting us trying our hand at making teh tarik. I mean, teh tarik is an official word in yeah. the Oxford Dictionary. It's, exactly. like a, it's a skill that we all need to learn, right? Mm. But again, it looks like oh, all yeah. the right, You yeah. pour any one. Wow. They do it without yeah. spilling rock. How long do you take to learn how to do that? Two years. Two years. Wow. Plus, let's not forget, mm. the liquid is piping hot. Oh, yeah. So, any spillage, and you're screwed. Fell on my hand. Oh, poor thing. It's quite obvious that we are very bad at making teh tarik. But uh, since you're the teh tarik master, can I have uh, two glass, please? <laughs> <laughs> so here we go with the finished product. This is my prata, the one that I made uh, with uh, the dough. And that's your prata, Martin. This is my beautiful masterpiece. It looks like your face. Okay, so Chef Maran right now is going to do a taste test and uh, see which prata tastes better. Oh, you taste mine first, yeah? He's going to taste that you one know, first. You, you start with the better one. Very nice. Chef Maran. He's doing the actual taste test. He's chewing to see the consistency of the prata, whether it's up to scratch and up to scratch. Good, eh? Yeah, he didn't really reply. Look nice, the yeah, flip. Okay. The flip is okay? Uh, yes, no, enough for the flip. The thick but the this prata. is the thick prata, right? Ah, ah, ah you see, thick prata, like coin prata. I told you already, I wanted to make coin prata. Look at how thick yet is so crispy. It just peeled off. Yes, okay. must crispy but thick. So, Chef Maran, if you were to decide mm. which prata, which is the champion prata, is worthy of being served oh, mm-hmm. here. There. I think, oh! <laughs> okay, that, I was going to take out my wallet and give him money, but no, not anymore. Yeah. I Keep win! Back. I'm the prata king! Will we see a mutton's prata store? At this point, I'm going to say uh, yes. Huh? Yeah, if you want to drink tea jato yeah. from the floor. <laughs> Basically, when you come to our store, you drink the tea off the floor and all your prata go whole. No, 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 no. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. I got, I got a brand new concept. Oh, it, yeah. It's genius. Okay. You come to our prata store, you make your own prata, and you make your own tea tarik, and then you pay us. That's the best. Come to our shop, okay? <laughs> that was fun, isn't it? And I think it's really hard to do those prata as well. So thank you to the muttons for uh, teaching us. And um, I like when the guy says, yeah, uh, okay, not crispy. <laughs> he will not be sort of coerced into saying something else. I love it. It's time now for our... Jesse's Poll of the Day.
<laughs> okay, after eight weeks of circuit breaker, you now have an idea, a better idea, because you've done it for quite a while, about working from home to better make a judgment. Do you prefer to work from office? Or to work from home Which one is it and why By the end of the show We will have the results Okay Don't forget Two of our pollers Not the ones that do the poll dancing But the ones as part of the poll You could walk away with a wonderful feast Courtesy of G7 Cinema Live Seafood Which is our foodie's choice winner For best frog porridge Okay Mr. Panganathan David Hello It says Team work from home No, sorry Team work from office Working in the office Allows us to enjoy The luxury of the air conditioning The cool air Brushing across your face. Mm. <laughs> and no kids to interrupt you. Yes. Uh, in dreamland while you work. You can also catch up with your colleagues. And work from office allows us to get away from the busy family life. Ah, I see. I see where you're coming from. The kids are really getting to you, idea. Now, Rids1 says, team, work from home. I can tune into Class 95 when I'm working and listening to you. Yes, I can't do that in the office. Why not? Why not? You tell your boss to come and talk to me. Actually, why can't you? You can put on your earphones, right? And tune in with streaming. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever tried that? Want to say hi to uh, uh, Agnetha, who says, Work from office. As an early childhood teacher, um, I miss my babies. Their hugs, their kisses, their laughter, their hee hee their giggles. I can't wait to get back into the studio and welcome my babies back for some songs, some drama, some stories, some art activities. 20 years in and I love my job. Okay, you're jobbing, you know, and you have to have that close contact with the kids so I can imagine. Okay, we're going to get back to our poll of the day, but Please vote facebook.com slash class 95fm. Also on our Instagram stories and share why. It's Yassi's poll of the day. <laughs> We're going to go on air now. Class 95, a bit of Spice Girls with Viva forever. Forever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> it's Yasmin with you. We're live on Channel 5 for the last Friday ever of uh, our little show. So uh, invite you to tune in and you can see our wonderful Classic 5 studio and how the whole panel thing works as well. Coming up, I got some Haley Steinfeld, some John Mayer and some trivia about John Mayer as well. But right now, let's talk more about Italian food. Class 95's Nom Nom News with Yasmin. Okay, so one Michelin star Italian restaurant, Buona Terra, they've launched a home cooking series. So it's essentially a pasta kit. But the key here is that it is prepared and assembled upon order and delivery. So what you have is the freshest house-made pasta. Pasta, which really makes a difference, okay? So the kit is especially great if you don't have much experience in the kitchen, but you want to try cooking a Michelin, that's important, Michelin restaurant quality dish with just a few simple steps. Or if you're an avid cooker, you want to put together a really quick meal in just 15 minutes, then you can let your creativity take over. You can add whatever ingredients you have at home and make it your own. So it's available in a a customizable choice of three perfectly portioned classic pastas that's made daily fresh as well. There's tagliolini, tagliatelle, and pappadelli. To complement a selection of three of their finest sauces, you've got al pesto, you've got amatriciana, mm, as well as crab and fresh Sicilian tomatoes. Now, don't worry, the kit is also packed with all the essential ingredients that you need, like the rock salt, the olive oil, even the cheese for the topping to finish it off. Alternatively, hey, you can leave it to Chef Buona Terra. Uh, Buona Terra is held by Chef Dennis Lucci, who's from Lombardy. And he is all about contemporary Italian food. So expect very interesting reinterpretations that are more complex and more intense, more punchy uh, than the traditional dishes. They are offering customizable five courses menus. That's from 128 per person. This is fine dining and this is Michelin. Or you can also order a la carte. Um, through the a la carte menu as well. So they're open from 12 to 9 for self-pickup. You can just drive by to the restaurant at Scott's Road and just do a quick pickup. A minimum order of $50, island-wide delivery at just $8. And to order, check out buonaterra.audle.me. So buonaterra is spelled as B-U-O-N-A-T-E-R-R-A dot audle dot me. Class 95's Nom Nom News with Yasmin. 
Okay, so from Buona Terra Italiano Food, we go to our Foodies Choice winner. So this is the last of our Foodies Choice series. And today we shine the spotlight on the winner, which has been nominated and voted by our listeners. This is Best Crivet, Crivet, Crivet Frog Porridge. Check it out. a frog jump. Can you tell? Can you tell? Because this week is all about best frog porridge. It is the final episode of Class 85's Foodies Choice, which is our food awards based on your votes and nominations. So this week, we have found best frog porridge, and it's right here at Geylang Lorong 3. Follow me! And here it is, the winner for best frog porridge is G7 Sinma Live Seafood. Actually, they own two of the corner units at Geylang Lorong 3. Let's go speak to the owner. Okay, so I've got with me the owner of G7 Sinma Live Seafood. It's Winston! Ta-da! <laughs> okay, Hi. first of all, tell me, why is it called G7 Sinma Live Seafood? It's a very long title. G7 is because we started off in Geylang Lorong 7, and uh, Sinma is Singapore, Malaysia. Oh! Oh, so simple. I couldn't figure it out for the life of me. But now yeah. you're at Geylang Lorong 3. Yep. Okay, tell us the history of the store. So G7 started off in 999 by a very good friend of mine in Geylang Lorong 7. That time was a small store, so it shifted over to Geylang Lorong 3 to get a bigger premises. Right. And how long have you been here? 15 years. About two years ago, uh, my friend wanted to retire. And I've been eating here since young. Right. So very passionate about the food here. So I decided to convince him to pass it to me. Right, which is great. It means yeah. you're carrying on the tradition. Yeah. If not, yeah. then you might have just closed it down. Absolutely. <gasps> Okay, so tell us what makes your frog porridge so special. First of all, I think uh, not many people know that frog porridge is actually very healthy. The frog meat is actually more lean than even chicken breast and it's very nutritious. Our recipe is a very special recipe that is uh, created by a renowned chef 40 years back and it's actually much older than the shop itself. And uh, we, we continue it since 1999. Cooking the frog porridge is a very tedious process. It takes us about 12 hours to prepare the porridge. So it takes constant stirring of the porridge and uh, our special broth to give us a very smooth, creamy and flavorful porridge itself. That's a lot of muscles used, right? <laughs> yep. There, and there, got muscle, got muscle. But actually you don't cook it, right? <laughs> no, no. Okay. We have a very vigorous process of selecting the frog itself. We actually make sure that the frog is served very fresh. The frog size, it gives you the best quality, the crunchiness of the meat itself. Right, so you're not going to choose a frog this size? Huh? Yeah. That's too soft. Is how, how big does it have to be? This size. So if it's this size, it's too hard. Okay, and then the special sauce. Okay, this special sauce as I've mentioned is created by the chef 40 years back. Right. Today we actually got our duck soy sauce that's customized and made only in Singapore by us. Right. So nowhere else actually has this soy sauce. Nowhere else. That's right. Cool. Yeah. You know what? All that talk. I'll be very honest. I have never had frog porridge before. Never. So you gotta try it. Can I try it? You gotta try it. Okay, let's do this. Let's do it. All right, I'm ready to try my very first frog porridge. We've got in two variations, which is the ginger scallion and also the gong bao, which is spicy. But porridge comes first. You gotta give it a good stir. It looks very creamy. Oh, it smells good. Very fragrant. It's delicious on its own already. Okay, let's try the gong bao, which is obviously famous and it's you know very spicy as well. It's very soft, but it's a bounciness to it. It's really nice. Nice. Now we're gonna try the sauce. Thick and gooey, and give it a good stir. Mm. Well, congratulations, G7 Sinma Live Seafood has been nominated and voted by our listeners as best frog porridge. Congratulations. Thank you. Delicious, yummy delicious. Now that feast, including that delicious uh, award-winning frog porridge, could be delivered right to your doorstep this evening if you're one of two winners for our poll of the day in our Friday Feast Surprise. And to our Muslim winners, don't worry, the feast will then be a halal feast from the sister restaurant called The Dim Sum Place. It's worth over $80 to your doorstep. Okay, now before we get to that, it is time now for Furry and Feathered Friends Friday. So the reason that we do this, and this is the last time we're doing this, by the way, is because animals have the power to heal our minds, our spirits, and our souls just by looking at them or interacting them. So we found some wonderful videos to hopefully put a smile in your face. Now, this one's a contribution by our Class 5 listener. Uh, his name is Chi Bang, and this is Toffee the dog. And Toffee, whenever somebody plays the piano, he will want to sing along with 
the uh, the person playing the piano. Check it out. So cute. Oh, he's got a great voice. <laughs> Can do his own concert. And at the end, you see, he looks toward the owner and so goes like, "Hello." How did I do well? Did I do well? Unfortunately, he passed away last May at 16 years old. So we we remember Toffee, the dog who loved to sing and always asked for approval. That is so cute. So in the news recently, I think this uh, really, really made me feel all squishy and mushy. Here's a video. Let's check it out. It's actually somebody that took this video on the roads. It's obviously not in Singapore. If you notice, there's a hedgehog, which is a wild hedgehog. And there is a wild bird as well. And the bird is trying to get the hedgehog off the road because it's dangerous. It's like, hey, mate, hey, mate, go, move on, move on. You're going to get squashed. Move on, move on. Come on, move, move. Yes, keep your butt moving. Then once, you know, you get to the curb, he's like, come on, come on. Then after that, ah, okay, lah, whatever, lah, leave you be. <laughs> but at least he got the hedgehog all the way from the middle of the road, all the way to the side, because if not, that, that hedgehog could have been just whoosh, squashed. And this one made me smile so much. So Hosan Leong and friends, they took a Singapore Zoo video and they voiced it. Mm, check it out. Wow, so wow, shook. What a damn shock. Hey, why so cold? Why so cold? Uh? I thought we were in Singapore. Yeah, you say Singapore is tropical climate. Never say that. Steve D. Oh, I never. You're not Steve lah. I am. Who are all these people staring at us? Maybe the tourists. What strange looking animals. Maybe we are the tourists. Oh, look. Yeah. What are those things? Maybe they're skittles. What's a skittle? You are a skittle. You dance skittle. I want to dance. Do it. Steve, 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 Steve. Oh, he's so brave. Is it skittle? Or oh, M&M? Lick it, Steve. Hey, I also want to try. My turn, my turn, my turn. I also want to try. Steve, hurry up, la. I'm Bibi at the school girl, la, bodo. Well, I'm sorry, but you look like Steve. Okay, it's oh, all look like Steve. Steve. Slowly, gently, itty bitty, oh, 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 I'm falling. Don't worry, baby, I'm the school girl. I come help you. Eh, where you go? Oh, you okay already, ah? Yeah, I'm okay already. I'm coming to save you. Okay, no, okay, no, okay, okay, no, okay, no, okay, don't come down here. Okay, don't. Okay, okay. I see, la. Now how? Actually, it's okay, like. Why these rocks so soft, one, ah? Huh? Slowly, gently, slowly, gently, 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 so cute, isn't that? And that brings us to the end of our Furry and Feathered Friends Friday. We're going to get back on air. Bit of John Mayer with Why, Georgia, Why? It's Yasmin with you. And uh, John Mayer has been through quite a lot because uh, I think he went off the rails at some point. And he shares a little bit about why he sort of went off the rails. I dropped in at the top, you know, and I remember, like, if you look back on some of the songs, like, Gravity is me going like, hey, I'm kind of aware that there's a little bit of a volcano happening. And the, the best thing for me is that having gone through, I think, probably every version of some relationship with success and failure, I think it probably makes me a, a good, uh, I don't know, overseer for other people who are, who are moving their way through it. Yeah, so he's become a mentor to Sean Mendes. And Sean Mendes says that he, he really looks up to John Mayer because John Mayer sees the same things that uh, Sean Mendes is going through. Starting out really young, very, very talented, and dropping in from the top. But Sean's just a better version of me in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's like John Mayer 2.0 without the weird software viruses. Oh it's God. like I was a beta version of a celebrity, and he's just a better... <laughs> He's a better version of a celebrity than I ever was. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's not as volatile, you know. But I like where I've ended up, put it that way. Now that everything's sort of flattened out and we've leveled out at cruising altitude, yeah. it's lovely. I feel like my ambitions have settled in. Like, I've retired from a certain type of ambition. You ever download a file, but it doesn't tell you how big the file is. It just right. tells you how many megs you're downloading. You're like, how big is the file? It'll right. be like 4.5 megs of question mark. You don't know when you're growing up what the limit of what is available to you is. So your whole concept is world domination. Yeah. And I think it's a very simple mistake. Now, I think the play out of it isn't always simple, but it's a very simple miscalculation to go, well, I've got so much, but maybe it's just one tenth of what I could have. Yeah.
Right, so he was after world domination, and these days he's realigned his ambitions. But I love John Mayer. If you ever, ever get a chance to see him live in concert, please do, because he's amazing. He's like a guitar god. He's so sexy on it. And he's just so talented and so intelligent as well. So John Mayer, I think Sean Mendes is really lucky to have him as a mentor. Music flows a bit of blue right now with All Rise. Right here on Singapore's number one English radio station, it's Class 95. Okay, let me set my panel. Okay, okay. Are we ready? Are we ready to wrap up our... It's Yassi's Poll of the Day. Woo! Our Poll of the Day. It's all about... After eight weeks of circuit breaker, now you have a better idea of how working from home is like, which we've never had as an extraordinary circumstance. So with that in mind, with the new habits created, and now you know what it really is, would you rather work from office or work from home? Let's get to your messages. Connie Tan says, team, work from home. My workplace is in the east. Is that the east or is this the east? Okay, never mind. Uh, and I'm staying in the north. Traveling to and fro office at home easily takes Two to three hours. OMG, that's very long. Uh, besides this, work from home enables me to just uh, get ready uh, to get ready in five minutes. No dressing up, no makeup, no one see me. <laughs> That's the best part, actually, from working from home, right? Uh, Jamie Chong says, definitely work from home. Through the working hours, maybe longer, that's true. There's greater flexibility. If I have something urgent to attend to, I can make a quick dash to attend to it, and I can return back to work. Working from office doesn't allow me to do that due to rigid work culture. Ooh, okay, that's true. The flexibility of it, isn't it? Uh, Vincent Neo says, I'm team work from office. My home is too messy. Uh, I mean, too cozy. <laughs> <laughs> For me to work from home, I just want to lip up and rest. Woo, lip up one time. Uh, so I don't want to do anything. Uh, so it's the whole motivation, right? Okay, we've got lots of messages coming, but let's get to our winners. So two of the pollers in today's poll. We have a Friday feast surprise. A delicious feast will be delivered to your doorstep. We'll show you the picture in just a bit, but let's get to our winners. Our first winner is... Sherlyn Chen. Hey, Sherlyn, congratulations. Sherlyn is a team work from office. It says, because my office is just like my second home. Seeing my colleagues feels like I'm missing my family members. Missing them so much. And I'm hoping to get back together again. Not forgetting my table. My chair, my pantry with lots of snacks. Oh, you're very lucky one of those offices with snacks, huh? Uh, the walk to the toilet, the aircon, many, many, many more. Most of all, it's the people that make me want to go back to the office. So I can't wait for 2nd of June. So I guess, Sherlyn, you're one of those that gets to get back to the office. So congratulations, you're one of our winners. And our second winner is... <laughs> Joanna Cho! And Joanna is team work from home. It says, because I work in a very old school travel company where the ideal work situation all must be present in the office to show that you're working. Punctually arrive, but expected to work late. No music allowed because it's distracting. Full business attire, even if we don't meet clients every day. Must be seen at the desk. At all times, the list goes on. In the office, I can only listen to radio in secret. Like you're doing something that is against the law. <laughs> At home, I can listen to Class 85 as loud as I want. I can be super comfy, casual attire. Working from home offers much better work-life balance. I can even spend the travel time to head downstairs for a quick run. That is true. So congratulations and thank you for all your messages as well and sharing with us. Joanna Chong, team work from home and Sherlyn Chen, team work from office. Both of you are our winners. Yay! And we're going to have a wonderful feast with over $80 delivered right to your doorstep this evening. We're going to be in touch via Facebook or whichever way that you commented. Okay, delivered right to your doorstep. And it's courtesy of G7 Sinma Live Seafood. Of course, that delicious frog porridge is in there as well. Ah. Ah, they're going to do the spicy one for you, plus a lot of other dishes. So enjoy the meal on us. Time for our results. Class 95 listeners and Channel 5 viewers, which one do you prefer? Working from office or working from home? And here we go. 
Okay, okay. Eh, where my results? Okay, hang on. Ah. My results are, um, ooh, quite tight. 60% prefer to work from home. <laughs> Surprise! I would have thought work from office, but hey, work from home. Thank you so much for joining us on the last Friday of the show. We'll be back for one more show on Monday at 1 p.m. In the meantime, have a fabulous weekend. Stay safe, stay home. I'm Yasmin. Bye. This program is available on.